as always, we just thank the Most High Yah for all that he's doing, for his continued blessings upon all of our lives. Some we can see, some we can't even see. For bringing us to this moment and allowing us this opportunity. In what we believe to be these last days, Abiy and in Torah, they, they've been saying it's been the last days for quite a while. As we draw closer to you, Abba, we just ask for the strength to endure to the end, no matter what our situation is and where we are. There is an endurance. We ask for the wisdom to move correctly um, in this time of, of many distractions, as we talked about earlier, many deceptions, as we've been kind of talking about throughout the day. And that you fulfill the scripture truly that the, the darkness will never comprehend the light. And we pray that your light is up on us, that your light is in us, that you cleanse our temples. And we have a we are a vessel that you can sit your throne on our hearts to be the authority of our lives. Understanding that we will trip and fall. Some mistakes are made. Mainly because we are ignorant to so many things as we are relearning ourselves, Abiy, and we understand and thank you for your patience, knowing that you are all knowing of that. But we just pray, Father, that you continue to give us the wherewithal that even in any hiccups along the way, that we remember you are a merciful Elohim and that you continue to put it on our hearts to get back up and to put our hands back on your plow. In the name of your only begotten son, whom you said you were well pleased, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Messiah, our shepherd, our teacher, the one who willingly gave his life for the sins of a wicked people who didn't even want to accept the offering of the free will offering that he was making on behalf of us to fulfill our scriptures of which our ancestors knew. We give you all honor, glory, and praise for sending them to make such a big sacrifice for your people in the restoring the connection that we have to you and restoring the covenant that you made on behalf of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. In his name, we pray all things. Hallelujah, 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 and amen. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As we start today, as I was saying before some of you got here, it was it's been a good week of Torah. Hallelujah. I've been reading some Bible. I've been doing a lot of things, but I've been reading some Bible and I had two different ideas. But today, I think the ideal is about the word delusion. Because there, there is a great delusion. We didn't see it. This election was a big delusion. And we're going to get to some of that. It's a lot of different things where it's, it's a lot of delusion in this world. It's a lot of delusion with amongst our people. And I think that delusion should be spoke about. Shelly, do you want to do the breakdown for the word delusion now? I think you was on point. You had it together. I want to make sure I write this down, too. Give me two seconds. Let me get Ariel taken care of. Hold on. Ariel, grown. You ain't got to take care of her, man. Let her be. As the script says, Abraham's wife was told, Abraham was said, listen to your wife. <laughs> listen to oh, your wife. I, don't, I, I don't recall that scripture. It's there. It's there. <laughs> I'm about to put it in the chat, sir. You need to put that in the chat. I don't know that one. He said she was righteous. <laughs> True. Sarah was on Abraham. I don't know. Sarah was at Abraham like, why you ain't asking y'all to give me no baby? You bogus. <laughs> Abraham was like, what you think I'm doing? <laughs> she said, you ain't praying. You ain't asking y'all to give me no son. You foul out here. Oh, man. That's actually one of my favorite okay. interactions. Okay, I'm ready. 
You ready? Mm hmm H82. Okay. Hello. H8267, right? Yeah. Get myself together. I got stuff all over the place. Um, it's on the screen. I'm ready when you're ready. Okay. It's um. Uh, yeah, it looks nice. Sorry. Um. All right. So it the word is shaker, and it's spelled shin cough fresh. All right. So. Shin is in, in um, the ancient Hebrew, as we all know, um, just come out of disclaimer, as we all know, ancient Hebrew letters all have pictorial meanings like hydroglyphs. So with words that their, their, their words always showed a picture of what that word meant. All right. So the first word, so it's been, like I said, it's spelled Shin, Kof, Resh. Um, shin is a picture of teeth, so it's pictorially showing um, the devouring, consuming, or destroying of something, because when we chew, we destroy, right? Um, cough is a picture of sun at, at the horizon, so when the sun is either setting or um, rising, it's gathering light to it. It's either the um, light coming into the day or light exiting. Um, the day. So there's the collection of light. And then Resh is the picture of a man. Hold on. Why did hold on? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. For some reason my screen went black. Okay. So when you put that together, so with um especially for the first two root where the two root letters is the shin and the cough. So the teeth representing destroying and the cough, the um, gathering of light. So with delusion, you're getting a picture of the destruction of light. Um, because when you're under a delusion, you're under darkness. Because light is always representative of truth, of facts, of, of knowledge. So when you're under a delusion, that light, that knowledge, that truth is destroyed. So you're, you're getting a pictorial... Um, representation of that destruction of that life, destruction of that truth. And so, and then you have the picture of the man. So that man is under that darkness, under that destruction of light. So that's when you see in that picture of delusion. So the destruction of light. Um... Destruction of light or darkness um, in man or of that man being under that that um that darkness. Okay. Um, let me know when I can ask a question. Go yeah. ahead. Right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Told us this. <laughs> um, so that I think I wasn't really looking. So I think isn't shaka also a word for worship? Or is that a different word? It's a different word. So okay. it could be okay. the same letters with vowel points. If the mm -hmm. vowel points are different, then it, mm -hmm. it changes the meaning of the word. But it probably has the same letter. I have to look at it, but that's different. Okay. Because I was going to say, also, I think I heard somewhere that words, these words can have a negative or a positive. All Hebrew words have a, a negative and, and um, a, a positive connotation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. How would I? I think it is Chicago, too. It means to bow down it and prostrate thyself. Okay, so yeah, and then the vowel points is probably a little different, but the um the letters, the Hebrew letters used are probably the same. And but again, going back to your point, Hebrew Hebrew words and Hebrew letters have negative and positives. Because even like going back to the word sleep yesterday, or not yesterday, but last week, sleep has a positive. Even just that word has a positive and negative connotation you know, designation. It could be rest or it could be final sleep, death. The destruction of light causing darkness in man. Delusion. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. fair? fair break now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anything else anybody got for delusion? 
The delusion of this world is a serious thing. Hallelujah. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for the breakdown of that word. You said it's shakar. Let me see. Yeah. The Strong's definition, shakar, an untruth by implication, a sham without a cause, deceit, deceitful, false, falsehood, falsely, famely, liar, lie, lying, vain, which we know vain in Hebrew means something, a worthless thing, an unprofitable thing, or wrongfully. Hallelujah. We'll start off with some reading. First Kings chapter 22, verse one. In first Kings, um, in first Kings, we have, uh, or in here, we have this King Ahab, who this is the, for those who don't know, um, the 12 tribes have been broken up into two nations by now. You have the Southern Kingdom, which we see Jehoshaphat is the king. I believe Jehoshaphat to be one of the righteous kings. You had a couple unrighteous kings in the South as well. Um, why don't you correct me if I'm wrong, but of the, I think it's 12 kings before the fall of Israel to Babylon, could be more, uh, could be less. The Northern Kingdom never had a righteous king. All of the kings after the breaking up of the nation under Solomon's son. So the two kingdoms break up. When Solomon is the king, he dies. His son is Rehoboam, I believe. And I think it broke up in the first king of the northern tribes is Jeroboam. I could be wrong with the names. Um, but um, it breaks up under Solomon's son. And from that point, the northern kingdom never has a righteous king. I don't know if Rehoboam will be considered a righteous king in the South either, but you do have some righteous kings in the South, Hezekiah, uh, Asa, Jehoshaphat, um, and it's more than that. I know Manasseh was considered not to be a righteous one, um, which is Hezekiah's son. I think Ahaz in the time of uh, Isaiah, Ahaz was the king. He's I don't think he was considered to be a righteous one. But for the most part, the ones in the South were all righteous. In the north, you had no righteous one. So when you get to Ahab, and you know, when we went through the book of Judges, we we talked about how we seen that it wasn't just the tribe of Dan, although they kind of started it, but in the northern kingdoms, you already had certain tribes gravitating toward gravitating towards idol worship or the worship of the gods of the people that were around. It's it, you know, it's ironically when you think of the Bible, it's funny how. A delusion. The Old Testament is done away with. It doesn't matter. Some people teach that. Some people believe that, right? The delusion of that that leads you into darkness is when you take on that stance and you disregard the Old Testament, it's part of the reason, maybe the biggest reason why most folks don't understand the New Testament. <laughs> because all of this flows together. The reason why in Judges that these people are around, that they're worshiping their gods is because when we come into the land under Joshua, Yah told them to you know, basically you need to kill all these people in these wars you're about to fight. Israel did not, for whatever reason we were choosing to keep certain people alive. And I'm of the belief that the reason why we kept a lot of those people alive because the men of war were taking those women, especially the ones that were virgins, and they were marrying them women, and they were keeping some of them women alive. I just don't see none of the women marrying the men because at that time our women, they definitely weren't women of war although they had it in them, they weren't fighting these wars. And they wouldn't have really been in a position to say, no, keep him alive. I'm going to marry him. But the men, I'm, I'm positive we're doing that. It's the same way we do that today. And from that, when you get to Judges, a couple hundred years out, give or take, Israel and the northern tribes are starting to already build like these temples and different things to worship the gods of the nations around. So by not listening to Yah say you need to move all these people. And it's a scripture where Yah says, since you all didn't kill all these people, as I told you to, I'm going to use them to try you basically. And some of y'all are going to worship their gods and you're going to fall to this. You know, Yah has always told Israel every step of the way, this is how this is going to go if you don't want to hear what I'm saying. But with that being said, we get to this point. 
a couple kings in, because this is still first king. So we not that many kings away from Solomon and, and, and King David and all of them either. But maybe halfway. Don't let me say not that many. But all of that flows to this moment. And now you got Ahab. And Ahab is the new, is the next one in the line of the unrighteous kings of the of the 10 northern tribes. It was 12 tribes total. Two were in the south of the southern kingdom, which is always considered to be Judah and Benjamin. But I don't completely even understand how that was because on the map, at least based off of how we see the nation situated um, on the maps, right? Simeon is always kind of in the south. So it always made me wonder how did they, how did they get aligned with the northern tribes? But sin will make you do that. So I, I, I can't even say. With that being said, Ahab is picking up on the tradition of the northern tribes. When, Jer when the tribes first split, Jeroboam built two temples, it tells us. And Jeroboam said, we're going to worship our gods up here. You know, it was commanded Israel. You go back to Jerusalem for Passover and different things. In the north, I ain't going to say everybody. But Jeroboam, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a lot of the a lot of the folks in the north is like, no, we got our own thing. We go to our own temples. We got our own priests outside of the Levitical priesthood. And we've seen that in Judges where they took somebody from like the tribe of Judah and made him a priest over one of these temples. Like it, it's, it's. The way Yah has described that this is supposed to go has changed. And now we get to Ahab and this leads into the delusion. And first Kings chapter 22, verse one, it says. First Kings chapter 22, verse one, it says, and they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. So this was a time when it was wars going on. And they had a three-year span of peace. They had a three-year span of peace. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, or Jehoshaphat, let's see what his name means. Yahuwah will judge, or Yahuwah's judge, Jehoshaphat. The king of Yehuda came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, which I thought it was interesting in the Septuagint for servants. It said the king of Israel came and talked to some Hebrews. <laughs> know you that Ramoth and Gilead is ours. It's part of the northern tribes of Israel. It's ours. And we be still and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Basically, the king of Israel is telling the folks that's around him. You know, this Ramoth Gilead area, this is a part of Israel that Yah gave us. I don't know why we ain't just going up there and making them people get up out of our land. This is our land. Kind of remind me how them, how them wicked folks over there is acting today, but we'll get to that in a minute because all that play into the delusion. It's ours, but we don't take it from the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Yasharal, the king of the northern tribes of Israel, I am as thou, I am as you are. My people are your people. My horses are your horses. I understand the two tribes, the two kingdoms. We got two kingdoms of Israel, but at the end of the day, y'all know that's how we talk, right? If that was us up here today, I could hear some of y'all saying, listen, I understand y'all do your own thing up here, but at the end of the day, we is all Israel. <laughs> We ain't going to, you feel me? I understand y'all got some different things going on. And you're going to see Jehoshaphat is aware in the very next scripture that he's aware. Like, I don't know what all y'all got going on up here. But by blood, we is all Israel. Liking it too. I had to learn this later in life. And, and even with this election with Kamala, you saw a lot of this. Who black, who ain't black, the Jamaicans ain't black. Uh, different people in the Caribbean don't consider themselves black. No, they may not consider themselves black. They consider themselves this, this, and that. Black is kind of like an African American term. We big on that. Who, who, we, it, 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 you know, just go to part of the delusion. This shows you the signs of the time how they changed. Because I remember growing up in the nineties, nobody questioned who was black. Like, even if you were mixed, when we were growing up, even if somebody was mixed, if you were mixed and you 
came up around and or gravitated towards the black side of your family, nobody even thought like, oh, they mixed, they ain't black. Now you may have to define yourself. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we all descendants of slaves. You'll never hear nobody say that. And that's really what Jehoshaphat just told him right there. I understand there's some different things going on. You know, some of y'all is, 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 is descendants of slaves, but you grew up in Brazil, you speak Spanish. Some of y'all is descendants of slaves. You grew up in Jamaica, you speak Patois, <laughs> right? But we all descendants of slaves. And my people is your people and my horses is, my, is your horses because we all Israel at the end of the day. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray you, at the word of Yah today. Inquire, seek and ask. We need to go chop it up with somebody and see what the word of Yah say. And this go to kind of what I was just saying with Ariel. Jehoshaphat, like, yeah, we'll go with you. But before we do anything, we need to go check with Yah. We need to go check with some priests. If there's a prophet around, we need to pray. Before we do anything, especially as a nation, and that should be, that's a, that's a note for us as we are trying to reconstruct um, what's done happen here with our people. Let's first pray about it. Before we get to doing anything, let's pray. Jehoshaphat was like, we need to go talk to Yah. Mind you, Jehoshaphat is a righteous king, one of the righteous kings of the South. Ahab is an unrighteous king. They got their own gods now. They got their own temple now. Now, just because these people, the kingship in the North is right, is un we know for a fact, like even in the time of Elijah, that don't mean that everybody in the North is unrighteous because y'all told Elijah, I got seven prophets in the north who ain't bowed to need a bill. So that don't mean everybody unrighteous. But by and large, the 10 northern tribes of Israel has fallen into idol worship, other things that has led into the delusion. And then that's how we're going to bring it into today. Then the king of Yasharal gathered the prophets together about 400 men. Where you get 400 prophets at? First off which is probably what Yosef had said, like, hold on, I, where you, where you, you know, typically in the Bible, and you know, you don't get that when you read the Bible, but a lot of these prophets intersect each other, like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, they all prophets in the Bible, they all lived around the same time. Um, I can't even think who else lived around each other, but a lot of the prophets intersect each other. It ain't like they all happening in their own time, but it ain't 400 of them playing around. <laughs> and I can hear Jehoshaphat telling him, where you get all these prophets at, cuz? And he said unto them, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, yeah, you should go up. Yahuwah I gonna deliver it into the hand of the king. This was the prophets telling. His 400 prophets, right? And Jehoshaphat like, and Jehoshaphat was like, hey, hold on, hold on, I you ain't got no prophets of Yah around. You ain't ain't no ain't. Is there not here a prophet of the Most High Yah besides that we might inquire of him? I okay. And now this is where it comes to the head because he like look. I know y'all got y'all all thing y'all up here doing, and I ain't even trying to judge you. Y'all know that ain't right, but I ain't even come up here to judge you. That ain't why I'm here. I'm here just to check on the brethren, right? But hold on, though. No. You ain't taking. You feel me? You ain't taking Judah. This army that we got down here with us um, of mighty men. Our people have always been a warrior tribe. Our people ain't always been, which, which is what you really see today. The problem with the warrior spirit that's still in our people today is way too often we only use the warrior spirit against each other. And we give everybody else a pass. But that's a whole nother thing. We've always been a warrior tribe. And the whole world know it about us. You see it in these, in these, in these sporting events like, Bob, well, not Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I don't know what that was. But if Jake Paul ever crawl up out of them chitlin circuit matches that he doing to make that little money against these washed up and celebrity boxers turned boxers, 
If he ever crawl up out of that and he catch a professional Negro, he is done. And he know he's done. That's why he like, no, nah, I'm going to make a few dollars and fight 58-year-old Mike Tyson. <laughs> and put it in the claws that, Mike, you can't knock me out. Look, he was still scared. Mike, 58, he in the contract, he was still scared of Mike. <laughs> Yosefat told Ahab, look. I got a squad of Mike Tyson's over here with me. They not going in the world unless we go see a property. Y'all, I get it you with your man now. <laughs> Y'all up here worshiping idols? I ain't come up here to judge you. We know. Everybody know. It is what it is. It ain't really cool, but it is what it is. That's what y'all do. I pray that y'all bring y'all a lot of that, you know, yada, yada, yada. But if you want us to go, no, we're going to have to go talk to somebody that's hollering at y'all, though. I, I can't. No. I can't put these folks' lives in danger like that I'm with. Do you got anybody else? Is what he told them. Knowing y'all up here worshiping idols, and we just gave a brief history of how this has lived. Mind you, I think it's a scripture that says from the time of Joshua to the time of King David is 430 years, I believe. So... This idol worship in the northern tribes now has been going on for it. Had, it started after Joshua died. So you're looking at, and you're probably 200 years probably from King David here, maybe a little more. But this idol worship in the north amongst Israel, and it ain't even just in the north because as as uh, uh, a Koti Hananiah Zion was reading that Jeremiah earlier. Jeremiah said her treacherous sister Judah did worse. So you got some folks in Judah doing the same. Don't get it twisted, right? But this has been going on for about 600 years. And Jehoshaphat, like, I know y'all worshiping idols. That's your business. But I ain't listening to these idol worshiping prophets. That Now that's my business. You want our army. You want, to, you want us to go into war with you. You need to go find somebody who not under the delusion to speak to me because I'm not under the delusion. And you also is a lot of y'all when y'all talking to family members and different people and they try to tell you something about the Bible and really anything now and you can see the flaw in it. The thing we got to do is find a better way to relay that flaw, <laughs> you know, than just jumping down our people throw. And even when our people take that, take that route and they may jump down our throat, we still going to be as harmless as doves. And as cunning as foxes, and we just go dust off our feet and take the piece away as we leave, which is hard to do because some of us we like, and and I, when I say some of us, because I, I I have been known to be that. I've worked on that. That's why I speak it the way I do. I I have worked on that. Like, you know, you sound like a whole fool, but I'm gonna let you slide. I'm gonna just be humble with you and drop some needs, some nuggets of truth, and I'm gonna keep it moving because I really want to tell you about yourself, but I'm trying to be. I know y'all going through that. We all go through that. We done all been there. Be a stranger, be somebody you know. I really want to tell you about yourself, but I know it wouldn't be right to do that like that. Plus, if I do that like that, which is what the camps do, I may turn somebody off from ever wanting to hear this who may one day come around and want to hear this. It's a finesse with this. I say that a lot. It is a finesse with this. That's why y'all tell us y'all got to be humble. You gotta, you gotta be long suffered. You gotta be patient and kind. This ain't easy. Y'all like how you think? I, I, I was finna kill all y'all. I was so, <laughs> but I had to be patient and send my son to gather some of y'all back. Right, I was finna kill all of y'all. It wouldn't be none of y'all today had I had my way. I was gonna destroy all of y'all ancestors that all of us come from, and I was gonna build this back up from these rocks. You heard y'all sure? Y'all don't need you to be the seed of Abraham. Is you crazy? <laughs> Some of our ancestors were some of them people that were standing right out there he was talking to. Possibly. No, I need to hear from a prophet of Yah. Not these, not these people that's under this delusion. And the king of Yasharal said unto Yosad, there is yet one man. See, I knew it. You got all these 400 people. There's one prophet up here. Of which Yosefat them probably already heard of Micaiah because the prophets, which I call Micaiah, I believe this is the same one who wrote the book of Micaiah, which is one of the prophets in the Bible. The prophets would have a name, not of themselves. Whenever you see a prophet come through, the people would say, that's a prophet of the Most High, y'all right there. More than likely, Jehoshaphat and them know he around. As we always know, 
where the prophets at. Whenever you read Torah, we always know like the area where the prophets at. When you read the book of Samuel, a lot of times when Samuel was coming around, them people was like, oh man, here comes Samuel, man. You already know he ain't finna hear none of that. <laughs> Oh, man, here come Jeremiah. You always get that with the prophets. Oh, that's Isaiah. I'm not even going over there. I heard Isaiah been coming over there every day. I'm straight. Elijah or Elisha. Israel always know what a prophet at. Know that. And he told them, it's one. We got Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Most High God. He, he, okay. You ain't feeling these prophets? Okay. My bad. I know we kind of we, we kind of view Torah a little different. Ain't that how we talk? I know that's your interpretation. We kind of view the Bible a little different. You know, I get it, but okay. There's somebody up here who kind of speaking it like you. That's what we go through with the people we talking to. My eye hit me this week, man, with his mother, man. They, they view it a little different. And my eye hear this later, man. You done planted seeds. I just hold on. Let y'all work. We're going to stay in prayer. We got to do that sometimes. That delusion, we see it creep back up and kind of throw us off at y'all, but you got to stay faithful. Just plant them seeds and stay faithful. Y'all working. You serve an Elohim who working all the time. He said, we got one, Micaiah, whom we may inquire of the Most High God. I get it. Hey, Shelly, go get your daughter off the door. Micaiah said, I hate him, though. <laughs> And some people feel like that about us when we come around and all we doing is saying, you know, Jesus ain't no white man. But who cares if he white? Why you got all these pictures up of him if that ain't true? What's up, Ma? You gonna say hi? See my book. Come here. See my book. Come here. See my book. Come here. See my book. Where's your book? I don't know. Come say Shabbat Shalom. I don't know. Shabbat shalom, Ariel. Oh, you might as well say Shabbat shalom. Nah, you didn't. Shabbat shalom. Look, hold on, Shelly. Here she comes. Say Shabbat to see Mama Speed. Mama Speed. <laughs> say Shabbat shalom. Say Shabbat shalom, Tim. Tim, from there. Oh. Yeah, ain't you ain't been you? Time. Go ahead. Your book in your room. Go with your mommy. She had something to say. She wouldn't pray for y'all, though. She said, no, but she had something to say. <laughs> oh, man. He said, we got one up here. But I can't stand him. Ahab was like, I can't stand him, though. He also felt like, why you can't stand him? Because he don't never tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> For he doeth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He don't never tell me what I want to hear. And Jehoshaphat said, don't let the king say that. If he a prophet, yeah, he telling us what we need to hear. It's some people that look at some of us like that. People will Jesus Christ you every day. You will correct them one time and say, you know, that ain't really his name. That's the J didn't come around till the 1500s or whatever. And. You know, in Hebrew, the J sound is really a Y. It's really a Y sound. And uh, which who you call in Jesus is really Yeshua. Right. Or Yahusha or Yah Yahushua or Yahawasha. However you pronounce it. Right. And that one time you correct them after they Jesus Christ you every day. You the enemy now. Oh, I ain't even leaving that black Messiah, man. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> Hey, we got to stop being so in our feelings about that. It's like that. It's like that. All the prophets went through that. All of our people have been through that. As the disciples, I say, we need to be more like the disciples. Count it as an honor. I count it as an honor that somebody don't feel me for the word of y'all. That means I'm doing something right. They didn't feel the Messiah. He said, no, nah, King, don't talk it like that. The prophet of y'all going to get us right. Plus, if you want me to go, that's the only way I'm going. You need to get with a prophet of Yah, period. I ain't going with you no other way. And I got love for you, King. I ain't even mad at you. We all need to repent. <laughs> you know, he trying to be cool with the King. We all need to repent. Y'all up here kind of wild and I ain't going how y'all going. But we need to repent. I ain't doing that, though. I ain't doing that with you, though. 
A true servant of Yah will not be liked for telling the truth, for speaking about the light, as the truth and the light are go they go hand in hand. Then the king of Israel called an officer, called an officer, and said, "Hasten hither, Micaiah. Bring Micaiah, the son of Imlai. Go get Micaiah, man. Probably pulled that off to the side. And was like, man, I hope you can't find that Negro, man. But go get Micaiah, man. So Jehoshaphat, man." Quit tripping, man. I hope you can't find him, though. If you can't find him, don't look too hard. Come right back and say you can't find him, though. <laughs> For real. That's what he pulled him to the side said. Like, if you can't, I feel you, though, because I don't want to hear him either. 22.10. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Yehuda, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. So as they're going to get Micaiah, these 400 prophets that's worshiping every, every which a thing, like today, they prophesying at the gate. And Zedekiah, the son of, uh, I don't want to mispronounce this name, Hananiah? It might be. Am I wrong? Mama Speed, is that your name? Is this your name? Tana Anna. Tana Anna? I'm going to mispronounce that. I don't know. He made him horns of iron and he said, Thus saith the Most High Yah. This is one of the people out there amongst these false prophets. He made horns of iron and said, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. So these prophets that work that that openly worship these items, they're telling the king, "You good? Let's go into war and take that land." And 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 and, and just how we do, we using the Bible to justify the wickedness. Man, it don't matter what we worship. You know the the, the scriptures of our ancestors. Yah did say this is our land, though, so he gonna be with us. What you think? This ours. He gave it to Joshua and them, and blah blah blah. You know called Ramoth Gillett, so I'm assuming the Judge Gillett probably was from there, because I think this is a mountain. I know he was like on a hill or a mountain. What? Gillett was the one who was getting the grain and the people, the Philistines or whatever, he was hiding it or whatever, so they couldn't come take it to feed the people when he became a judge, if I'm not mistaken. One of you correct me in the chat if I'm mistaken on that, but I believe Gillett was the judge who did that. So this Ramoth Gillett, I believe, is the hill slash mountain, wherever he was at doing that. So now that we'd have made it four or five hundred years for that, the Syrians done took the mountain. And they like, man, it's really ours. The judge was up there. They telling him, let's go. Making trinkets. These horns of iron is what you going to use. Kind of remind you of the world today. People had things that superstitious and trinkets and uh, bodice. We going to do that. And all the prophets prophesied. So saying, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for Yahuwah shall deliver it into the king's hand, even though they worshiping idols and all that. And it's ironic how they still talking about Yahuwah going to do this and that. See how the delusion have you? The delusion have us thinking we could do any and all things else. But as long as we say it in Yah's name, everything going to be all right. That ain't how the name work. It don't matter who know the name of Yah. If you're not moving in a certain way, if you're not representing the character of that name, that name has no power for you. It's a lot of Israelites who knew the name of Yah who weren't representing the character of the name of Yah who may not make it. In the New Testament, what they call the New Testament, when we read what they call the Gospels, which is the life of our Messiah, all of them people that he talking to, they all know the name of Yah. <laughs> and he told all them people who knew the name of Yah in the Hebrew, it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it's going to be for a lot of y'all in that day. Because they weren't representing the character of that name, which leads us to represent the covenant, which is why we are free from the bondage of the law. Because when we look for the spiritual things and we represent the character of the name and we representing the spiritual things that Yah has shown us, then the law is not a burden. It's second nature. Some of you now, you don't even have to think about the law because of what you know to be true about the law. It is second nature that you're going to get up and keep it. We was talking about chitlins earlier. Everybody on here is like, 
I don't care if we somewhere starving and there's a plate of chitlins. It's the last thing to eat. We just going to die. We ain't eating no chitlins. Like, you don't even have to think about that no more. You don't even have to think about committing adultery no more. You don't even have to think about fornicating no more. It's just, it's the farthest thing from your mind. It's just never going to happen. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for Yahuwah shall deliver it into the king's hand. I thought to myself, we got to be mindful of who these messengers is. Because the wrong messenger will lead you into this delusion. He will lead you into the darkness. That's inside and outside of this truth. The wrong messenger. We have seen in this truth where messengers have led folks into tight situations. You got to be mindful of the messengers. And these false idol worshiping folks. It's talking about y'all going to do this and that. You got to be mindful of these messengers. It's something else we got to pray about. Shelly, y'all too loud. And the messenger that was going to call, or, or Ariel too loud, I should say. And the messenger that was going to call Makai spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophet declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let the word I pray you be like the word of them, of one of them, and speak that which is good. <laughs> of which Makai, the reason why the king already hate him is because Makai probably always chastising him. Like, I don't know who these folks you got worshiping, or I, I don't know who these folks is that you got up here um, prophesying and all that. He probably already be on him about that. So when he telling them that, you know, all the prophets gave him a good word. We finna do this and do that. Makai probably thinking, I don't trust none of them Negroes you talking about. <laughs> I don't care what they talk about. I don't trust not damn one of them. I'll be like that a little too much. Sometimes I'll be needing to chill out, but I ain't. No, I don't care who nobody is with a YouTube video. I trust y'all. You, you you break the video down for me first because I trust you. And if you break it down and it makes sense to you, then I go watch it. But I ain't got no hour to just be listening to no random person we didn't heard say some few names, y'all. And he got a video and then I'm 20 minutes in and I'm thinking, what in the hell is this Negro talking about? No, because I trust y'all. You need to be able to break it down for me before you even send it to me. You need to be able to make me understand why I should be watching it. I ain't just watching it. I'm too busy to just be watching it. I get... 50 videos a day. If I showed y'all my text messages, I'm getting videos from Israelites all over the world. Check him out. Check her out. Check him out. No. <laughs> you got to break it down before I go. And then if you can make it make sense to me, because I trust you. We done been around each other. We done broke bread. We done chopped up scriptures. I done been around some of y'all families. I see the way you bringing it. Okay, you made it make sense. I go back and watch. But we ain't just randomly watching every video that come through the phone. Ain't enough time in the day. I'm going to show one of y'all my text one day. I got a phone full of YouTubes. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 50 minutes. I, some, I, I didn't hear some people before. Like, what make you think I'm going to watch two hours of this person? I don't even know who that is. No, you need to condense this. Tell me where to start. <laughs> and then they hit me back. Like, just start at 45 minutes in. <laughs> That's the only way. But kind of like, nah, I don't know them folks. I don't know what them Israelites is up there saying to the king. He thinking that as this person is like, yeah, you need to come up here and speak it just like them. No, I don't. The words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. What is good? Go into war, take that land. That's good. That's what you want to hear. Is that what some of y'all want to hear? Y'all said go to war, pick up guns, take axes and knives and whatever else we can get. And let's go to war. That's what you want to hear? Makai like, no, nah, that ain't what I'm going to say. Verse 14, and Makai said, is the most high y'all live. Whatever y'all say to me, mind you, y'all already done said something to him, or at least I get that opinion. Uh, we, we could, we, we'll see when we get a few more verses down. But the way this kind of play to me, he already, y'all already done told him what time it is. But he like, whatever y'all say to me, that's what I'm going to go say. 
That's what I'm going to go say. The lesson from what Makai is saying here to all of you, some of the so-called wisest, most religious, most Bible-thumping folks you know, in and outside of the truth, know that. When you stand on some truth about this Bible, especially something that y'all differ on, it may set you against some wise people. It may have some people who come off like they got this all together. Y'all may not be able to stand the same no more over the smallest things. In Genesis chapter five or six, where it talks about the giants, it says that the sons of God came down and slept with the women. Some people believe the sons of God is the seed of Cain, or I take it back, the seed of, of, of Seth. Adam through Seth, the righteous line that comes through him, which is he is the patriarch of Enoch and Jared and all of those people you hear about leading down to Noah. Some people will tell you that the sons of God is his children. And they slept with the seed of Cain. Which is Adam's other son, his brother's children. And because they were righteous, it produced the giants. I don't see people be at odds over that. It could be something as simple as that. For the word, it may sit you, it may sit you apart. When do the day start? Do the day start at night? Do we keep Shabbat? Do we start at night or do we start when the sun rise the next day? I don't see people be at odds over that. That I don't know how simple that is. Y'all may feel a way towards that. I don't know. I know I ain't taking no chances. And I don't care what none of y'all say to me about it. I ain't taking no chances. I'd rather y'all come tell me, you know what, you ain't really have to keep all that Shabbat. It was just really from the sun of, you know, you was doing a little too much. I'd rather hear that then. Who told you that the day didn't start at night? Because the scripture don't say that. So who told you that? Where did you, where did, where that idea come from? Taking a stance on something you believe to be true in this Bible will set you apart from some folks who may be considered wise men, even prophets. And then we ain't even got to talk about Christianity. You know how that go. Every stance you've taken, <laughs> the way Christianity go, every last stance you've taken in the Bible since you called yourself waking up to some truth that set you on the other side of your, it don't matter what it is. Christmas ain't in the Bible. Get out. Easter ain't in the Bible. Get out. The Shabbat is the seventh day. It ain't the first day. Get out. You ain't supposed to eat pork or shellfish no more. Get out. Jesus is a black man. Get out. His name ain't Jesus. Get out. Every last stance you have taken. We supposed to keep Passover. Get out. You know you ain't supposed to work on the Shabbat. Get out. Some of us be doing too much. You know you ain't supposed to be listening to Kendrick Lamar. Get out. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be smoking weed. Where that scripture at? Get out. It don't matter what your stance is. You ain't, you know, we ain't really supposed to be sipping no wine. It say drink and be merry, but you know, maybe a beer. But I see you take a shot and get out. <laughs> when it comes to the world, like the other aspect of our folks, every last stance you have taken in Torah, true. A lot of them true too. I, I'm laughing about it, but a lot of them is true. But it don't matter what you just stood on. We don't want to hear none of that. And it's from some people who you once in your life thought were wise folks, anointed. That's because that's what you was calling them when you was in the church. I used to think such and such was so anointed. Now I'm in the truth, but I talk to them like, I don't even know what they talk about. And Makai, like, whatever y'all tell me, that's what I'm going to say. Even if it sit me on the other side of these so-called wise men. So he came to the king and the king said unto him, Makai, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall we forbear? Should we go or should we stay? These 400 prophets we got, they all said we should go. And Mikhail said, yeah, you should go. You should go. Go and prosper for Yahuwah shall deliver it into the king's hand. No, nah, you should go. You should go. Think about that. Before Makai said anything, he agreed with his prophets. Yeah, go ahead. You good? Okay. Don't go check it out, Doc. 
He like, go on, go check it out, Ock. You good. Everything going to be fine. Y'all got you. Got to be careful with people talking like that. And the king said to them, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of Yah? I thought this was funny. The word here for adjure. I had to look it up. It said, make an oath. Basically, he said to him, he said, Makai, you ain't never told me nothing I want to hear. I think you lying. Put it on something. <laughs> ain't that what we say? On what? That's what the young boys say now. See, back in the day, we used to be like, put it on something. You, I swear to God, man, mama said you better. Funny thing about when we was growing up, you really ain't supposed to swear to God ever, as the scripture tell us. But when we was growing up, if somebody swore to God, 95% of the time they told you the truth. That's why you told them, put it on something, man. I swear to God, man. Oh, my granddaddy who done died. 90% of the time that person told you the truth. Now, no, niggas be swearing to God on their kids <laughs> and be lying. Oh, my kids. Oh, God. Oh, my granny. And be lying. That's so funny how that didn't change, man. Negroes now put everything on everybody and be straight up lying. Man, I swear to everything and be a whole lie about everything they swear to. The king was like, no, nah, Makai, you ain't never told me what I want to hear. I need you to put it on something that, that was just true, <laughs> which is so our people, because don't know... I, I ain't never saw nobody else from another nation of people ask somebody to put it on something to, to believe it. We the only, and you know what's so funny about our people? It's so crazy with our people. This It's another reason that we know we're Israel because right or wrong, no matter what we do, everybody follow it. From us being that way, you catch all of the people from these other nations. Everything's on God, on bro, on kids, everybody, on my mama. You catch people in other nations talking about, oh, my mama, man, such and such and such. Oh, man. That started right here. This is the first time somebody told somebody, man. Ahab told the cop, put it on your mama. <laughs> put it on your daddy, man. That's true. Put it on your kids, man. On what? And Makai said, and he said, Makai said, See, he knew what he was going to say. You would have had Buddy already trying to strong army like you want to hear what your people say. I really don't much care for you anyway, so I'm going to show. I'm going to tell you what you want to say, and you still don't believe me. I came and said exactly what you told your host of fat. He don't ever tell me no good. Your man told me all these people already done said this. I came and said exactly what you want to say, what you wanted me to say. And you still don't believe me. That's the power of y'all. <laughs> I came and told you exactly what I knew you wanted to hear. And you still didn't believe me. So since you didn't believe me. I'm going to tell you what I really saw. And he said, I saw all of Israel scattered up on the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. All y'all up here scattered up on these hills. As sheep without a shepherd. Why ain't no shepherd? Because all your leaders and your prophets is idol worshipers and serving other gods. They not leading you. But understanding that the word for shepherd, we went over the word for shepherd. It's the same word for feed. They not feeding you, as Antioch said. Y'all not being fed the truth up here. Y'all all scattered up on these hills with sheep without real shepherds. And the most high y'all said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. No, because they master is everything wrong. The world today, but Israel especially, our people scattered abroad all over. They master ain't right. Who is your master? Our master is money, fame, celebrity. In this truth, we talk about in the truth. You got a lot of these YouTube sensations in the name of Yah, and we read the Bible, and it's about money, fame, celebrity. Steal. It ain't changed. Don't be no fool. Power. Whatever power we feel come with it. It ain't changed. 
sex, murder, and mayhem, as they say. Drugs, women, that's your master. The world, the government. That's why the election threw so many of our people off. Too many of our people, they mastered to become their government. They didn't forgot. Just 60 years ago, your government, just think about that. Just see, it ain't been 60 years, 61, 62 years at best. This same government that some of us that got way too caught up in was calling you three-fifths of a man. <laughs> I laugh, man, because I've been saying this for a few weeks, but I mean that there is people on this call right now who part of your life, you was three-fifths of a man here. I ain't never been three-fifths of a man here, at least not legally. Some of y'all know what that feel like. <laughs> and that's your master now. But they gave you the right to vote. That don't, I ain't saying don't vote. I'm just saying vote or not. My government ain't coming to save me. And I know that. No, these have no master, y'all said. Let, tell every man, return to your own house. That was the patience of y'all right there. Because if Ahab would have said, you know what, Makai, we finna return to our house. We finna go repent. We finna go pull ourselves back together. We finna go do what they did in Nineveh. Some heathens. I know that's hard. I know somebody who listened to this. They don't want to say to me they listen to this because they got a problem with me in a multitude of things. And it's okay. I still love you though. <laughs> this person always hates the, the story of Jonah and Nineveh because in this person's mind, no heathen can do right. The Ninevites was heathen. <laughs> and the Ninevites did better than every Israelite in that same situation in the Bible, just about. When Jonah, who didn't even want to go talk to them, Jonah like a lot of us. I ain't going to tell them heathens nothing. I hope they all die. <laughs> Man, them people were slaving our people and raping our great grannies and raping our men, buck breaking them and selling them into slavery and families was broke up and lynching and separated schools and we seen Rosa Parks we seen such and such them granny man at them schools. Jerry Jones, them was standing out there like, don't let them folks in our school. They was spitting on our folks. Martin Luther King, we didn't see them dogs and the water hoses and all that happened to our folks. We know that the CIA put drugs in our neighborhood and destroyed our folks. They created Planned Parenthood, got us aborting our kids. They got us doing this, doing that. They still got us working harder to get the least at every job. We got to jump through hoops. We can be overly classified, don't get the job to somebody from another nation who ain't even classified. We always tell we never to hit. The bank shoot us down, then give our non-Israelite descendant of slave counterparts because it ain't just because they get an African who migrated here who a doctor. He get the loan before the, 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 the descendant of slave who had worked here and get the doctor. So it ain't just white folks. But the point I'm trying to make is we don't feel a heathen today. And that's the same reason why Jonah was like, I ain't going to tell them Ninevites nothing. I hope they all die. And y'all said, fool, if you don't get up to Nineveh, you going to die. <laughs> Is you crazy? You going to go tell who I told you to go tell what I told you to tell them. And then when he told them, Jonah got mad that them heathens said, you know what? We need to repent. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> y'all said he spared them. I believe it was another 30, 60 years y'all spared Nineveh. He ended up still destroying it because the heathen got back to heathen. They don't get the <laughs> Don't get it twisted. But he still destroyed it. And in this moment, he giving Ahab them a shot. All of y'all up here in Israel with no master, y'all following all this stuff. No, you don't need to go to war with Syria. You need to go home and repent. You need to pull a Nineveh. I don't even know if Nineveh didn't happen at this point in the story yet, though. I know we around that time because Jonah is one of the earlier prophets. I'm not even sure if it didn't happen yet at the time of this story. Y'all need to go repent. You need to go do what them heathens do, which I, I just think about today, man, going to tell a, a count. No, y'all said we need to go do what them heathens and Nineveh did. What? Get out. That's why I say it don't matter if you in outside the truth. We don't, it don't matter who you go tell the truth to. The truth going to be a problem. No matter where you go speak the truth at, the truth going to be a problem. Just like I said a couple weeks ago in Jeremiah, when he told the Israelites, y'all said we need to go be slaves and serve these Babylonians. Saying that today, you got to get out. 
Oh, somebody who awakened house who know the Bible. You got to get out. We don't want to hear that. We ain't serving them. Y'all see. I don't care what y'all see. There's a lot of Israelites right now who'll be like, I don't care what y'all see. I ain't going to Nineveh. I don't care what y'all see. I ain't serving no Babylonian. And that's the wrong response. <laughs> and that is the wrong response. And he giving Ahab this chance right now. And you know what Ahab going to say? You're right. No, we're going to do what we want to do, huh? Y'all up here worshiping these idols. You know y'all ain't blessing, ain't blessing no wickedness. That's what he told them. Matter of fact, what I really saw is all y'all scattered on these hills. Y'all need to go home and repent. Every man, you serving something different than y'all. The nerve of you to come ask y'all to lead you in the battle. What scripture is that, Ahab? Y'all told us don't take no trinkets out of one of them spots we was raiding with Joshua. An Israelite took some abominable, buried it under his house. Gang of Israelites died in the next war. They like, what happened? Y'all, you said you got us. Y'all said, no, one of you niggas tripping. I told you don't do that and you took some abominable and now you got a bunch of families killed. That's why we got to be careful who we align ourselves with in this. You get your family killed playing around with the wrong messenger. That was an Israelite who did that. That was an Israelite who took that abominable thing. And got a bunch of other Israelites killed. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you? Did not tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil. Jehoshaphat probably like, nigga, he said exactly what you wanted to hear at first. You shot him down. Told him put it on his mama. <laughs> you knew it wasn't real. If you know it ain't real coming from a guy, why you believe it coming from these 400 false prophets then? That's what, that's what I hear Jehoshaphat saying to him. Why you believe him, but you don't believe him? He said, it, he said it just like them. You ain't believe him, but you believe all them. The fact that you wavering on that like that, it may be a reason why we might need to be cool. It might be a reason why we might need to rethink this. He really ain't just tell you nothing evil. If y'all saying that you need to go home and we need to go repent, we might need to rethink this. That ain't really evil. That's actually kind of good. That's y'all showing you mercy. But the delusion, the delusion got you not wanting to hear that. And we get into the delusion part of this. It got you not wanting to hear that. The delusion got a lot of people not wanting to hear it's time to repent. It's time to get back to praying. It's time to focus on some other things. That delusion is on the world. Don't get it twisted. But we only really focus on Yasha Raw. That's really my only purview. Anybody who fall up under that umbrella amongst Yasha Raw, more power to you. <laughs> You're a smart man or woman. But my focus is Yasha Raw. And he said, hear you there at, therefore the word of the Most High God. I saw this Makai speaking again. I ain't really tell you no evil. I told you you need to go home and repent. Because in truth, what I really saw wasn't me. I, I saw the Most High Yah sitting on his throne. I had a vision. Which is why when dude was telling him, you need to go up here and say exactly what they said. I believe he had already had this vision. He already know it. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. I saw the Most High Yah sitting on the throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. I saw that. I did. And Yahuwah said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Who going to go up and do this for me? And one said on this matter and another said on that matter. Y'all said, I'm tired of Ahab and all of this. He got 400 prophets. He up here teaching my people all his worship. I'm glad all my people in the North ain't, ain't bowed the knee to Baal, but he wilding. Matter of fact, which one of y'all can I get to go down here and tell him I said he should go up there? It's his time. I need one of y'all to go persuade him, it says there, but that ain't where we at. Same difference as the delusion, but. And there came forth a spear. 
This was Makai said he saw y'all do. It came forth a spirit that said, He said, I got it. He stood before y'all and said, I will persuade him. And the most I said unto him, how you plan to do that? Enlighten me. <laughs> Enlighten me, angel. How do you plan to do that? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you shall persuade him to prevail also. Go forth and do so. You know what? You know what? Yeah. 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 You go do that. Because when we choose to follow the ways and the teachings of the world, of the nations, of which our people do, of which the world and the nations naturally do, because it's their ways, right or wrong. Wrong, though. Yah will send a spirit to deceive us. He will send a spirit to deceive us. To cause us to be in that delusion. That spirit was the destruction of light or the truth causing darkness in man. And he said, yo. This king, this wicked king. I'm tired of him. It's his time. I need you to go. I need I need you to go make sure that he 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 going up here to war. It's his time. Now, therefore, behold, Yahuwah have put this lying spirit in the mouth, this delusion in the mouth of all these your prophets, and Yahuwah have spoken evil concerning thee. See, I tried to tell you at first, he said, go home. You ain't want to hear that. So let me keep it funky with you. See, I, I just hear our people, man. Let me now let me keep it funky with you, Ox, since you don't want to listen. I told you what it was. No, actually, y'all tired of you. And you about to listen to these other folks and go. And you about to die. Sound just like Sam. You're talking to Saul. You about to die. Don't worry about it. I was outside chilling. Makai, like, I was just at the crib in my garden. You just sent this dude to come get me. You about to die. Samuel said, I'm down here resting. I, I, I'm, I'm chilling, uh, Saul. Why is you still vexing me? Don't worry about it, Saul. I'm going to see you down here in a day or two. In a day, really. Tomorrow, you'll be right here with me. You about to die. You about to die. And Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, Anah, I'm saying that wrong. Went near and he stole on Makai. He smote him on the cheek. Fam stole on Makai for telling him the truth. Like, hello. And the sucker punched off and said, Which way went the spirit of Yah for me to speak unto thee? Where did the spirit go? Where did that spirit of delusion? Why the spirit of delusion didn't tell you I was going to hit you in your mouth, huh? And Makai said, Don't worry about it. Under any other circumstance, I would have just beat you up, Ock, but don't even worry about it. Behold, you're going to see in that day when you shall go into the inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Yasharal said, take Makai and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread of affliction, with water of affliction until I come in peace. Same thing some folks would do to us. And Makai said, if you return at all in peace, don't worry about it, King. I'm chilling. I'm good with the bread of affliction and the water of affliction. You don't even worry about it because if you return in peace at all, then y'all ain't even spoken through me and I'm a false prophet. Y'all need to kill me. Remember, if you tell a false prophet, the punishment is death. If you even return, then I'm a false prophet. You need to kill me. And he said, hearken, you people, every one of you, y'all better go home and repent. So the king of, of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Yehuda, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on your robe. And the king of Israel described himself as, disguised himself as a soldier, somebody regular in the war. And he went into the battle. 
But the king of Syria commanded his 32 captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, fight neither with small nor great. Don't be worried about Israel army. Y'all focus on going to kill the king. He know that was the speech. <laughs> and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, surely it is the king of Yasharal. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. They thought Jehoshaphat was Ahab. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Yasharal, that they turned back from pursuing him. In the middle of the battle, they had the wherewithal to be like, that ain't none of Ahab. I don't know why you out here in all these garments. You almost got yourself killed. <laughs> and a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore, he said unto the driver of his chariot, turn thine hand and carry me out of the host. I am wounded. Hold on. Somebody just hit me with an arrow. Give me about this battle. But the battle increased. He couldn't turn around. And the king was stayed up. He had to stay on his feet in his chariot against the Syrians. And he died at evening. And blood ran out of the wound in the midst of the chariot. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, every man to his city and every man to his own country. Makai told you that. Well, you went here. Makai told you that. You're going to make it home one way. <laughs> Man, I know when they came and told Makai that story, he like, I told them to go home and repent. They end up going with the king and probably a bunch more of them dead. So the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried the king of Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria and the dogs licked up his blood and they washed his armor according unto the word of Yah which he spake. And in the Septuagint, ironically, it said that the harlots of the city washed themselves in his blood, which would speak to the abomination and the idol worship and the doing what the nation's doing and all that in this. The point being, the delusion sent him to death because he ain't want to hear the truth. There's a lot of folks don't want to hear the truth today. The wicked going to believe the delusion. What is the delusion today? The delusion today is that although they didn't kill 20 some thousand kids, Israel got the right to defend themselves because the Palestinians killed a thousand of them. So 20,000 kids is, is OK. That's a delusion. The delusion today is World War Two. What do they call them? Vets, the greatest generation. They was fighting for freedom. That's how America got all this power. That was cool. America's the fighter of democracy, the, 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 the freedom fighter of democracies around the world. Although at the time of World War II, they was lynching and had segregated schools for the Negroes who built this country for free. That's okay. Don't you say nothing bad about the Holocaust and you Negroes who, who built this country for free for 250 years pull yourself up by your bootstrap with none we paid them jewish folks reparations though all these nations paid them reparations in one form or another part why they able to do what they're doing over there and everybody just kind of like america the only country holy standing behind them the rest of these countries is like yeah you got the right to defend yourself but you got a trip in lebanon now too you the shot missiles all in iran you and iran got a back and forth the houthis in yemen Y'all came over here and told George Bush and them that Saddam Hussein had them weapons of mass destruction and America took off and they still at war over there and they destroyed Iraq, a nation that people, if you ever meet somebody from Iraq, they'll tell you Iraq literally wasn't that bad under Saddam. We actually liked it. My banker used to be this, this, this woman from Iraq. I asked her one day, she said people loved Iraq. That's American media telling you that he was this rogue dictator and everybody hated him. <laughs> That's a delusion. What's the newest delusion? That a trash businessman that has been bankrupt six times, bankrupt the casino, daddy gave him 400 million is going to come fix the U.S. economy. <laughs> That's the funniest delusion to me. <laughs> All these evangelicals, white and black folks at these churches is in, yeah, Donald Trump gonna go defend the Bible. Dude that had three wives cheated on one of them with a porn star and paid her not to say nothing. <laughs> That's a delusion. Oh, if that ain't a delusion. Oh, man. Let me gather myself, man. Donald Trump make me laugh at days on end. It's delusion on the other side. 
it's okay for a man to say he a woman and participate in sports with women and pee in the same bathroom as them. That's okay. That's okay. That's the delusion. What delusion is black folks under? The Democratic Party is going to give you reparations so you running to go vote for them like they care about you. That's a delusion. They use you. They use you. They throw that reparation talk out for all of these campaigns and as soon as they get in office, have you ever noticed that that always immediately die? That's a delusion. And because of this delusion, not just on our folks, on the world, there's a lot of different delusions. It done led us right here to where we at. Delusion. The destruction of the light causing darkness in a man. And this is leading to a point. This delusion is leading to a point. And know that the delusion comes from the Most High Yah. As we see in here with Jehoshaphat. That was the point of this whole story with Jehoshaphat. And Ahab was to show that the delusion that he under, the lion spirit that told him what to do, Yah told him, go lie to him. He asked him, who could I get to? This angel said, I got him. I go put this lie in all his prophet's mouths. They gonna make him do what you want him to do. Yeah, go do that. Yah is the reason for the delusion. Because Israel, when you start to worship and do the things of these nations and, the, and, and of the world, when you forget who you are, or, or and them people, Ahab and all of them, they, they knew exactly who they was. They was like, we don't care nothing about all that Passover. No, we keep it Easter. We got groves and temples designed and built for Ashtaroth and Astarte and, and, and Baal, and that's what we worshiping. No, no. Jesus' birthday was December 25th. Well, that ain't in the Bible. It is in mine. <laughs> Oh, it ain't got to be. That's the tradition. That's what we follow him. Well, he said, I hate your traditions. You teach it for command. You teach it for doctrine, the commandments of men. So. We're going somewhere with all this delusion. Y'all don't be dismayed at the signs of this world. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech. We come and ask. We want to let's break some bread, brethren. Let's break some bread. We finna, we gather here today in the name of, of Yahushua HaMashiach and by our gathering together unto him. Let's chop it up. All of us who want to gather in the name of Yahushua. Let's hold on. Let's have a let's have let's get some understanding. First off, be not soon shaken in the mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor word, nor by letter as from us. Don't even let us trouble you. As the day of Hamashiach, it's really the day of Yah, but Hamashiach is the one coming to fulfill the goal, is at hand. No, Israel, don't be distraught. Don't, don't be distraught because Kamala lost this election. Project 2025, they say they're going to cut the Department of Education and stop teaching slavery. And they're going to take food stamps and Section 8 and, 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 and Medicare and understanding that it's real. But don't be dismayed, Israel. They're going to deport a bunch of people, man. You know, the Mexicans is the one who get all of the apples down there from the apple trees. Apples going to go from $2 a bushel to $20. We, which is funny because the scripture tells us in Revelation, the bread is going to cost. I heard somebody break down what it said. The bread going to go up to a loaf of bread that call going to cost $35. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I heard somebody say that one day. Like, that's a lot for a loaf of bread. I just ain't eat bread. <laughs> we go back old school. See, one thing about our people, man, we built for this moment. We don't know we built for this moment, but you built for this moment. Talk to your ancestors who were above 60 who was here when they was only three-fifths of a man. They had to make their own bread. See, we used to do that. We used to do that. Don't be dismayed. Israel, it don't matter what spear. It's a lot of that be going on. This and that person got a spear. Don't be dismayed by no spear. You walk with a different kind of light. Can't no spear see you, but you got to trust that. Don't be troubled, nor by word. Don't be troubled. Don't be dismayed, Israel. Don't, even by the words of men. Because as we read last week in Romans, 
it is high time for Israel to wake up because salvation is at hand. Verse three, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let nobody send you off. How will they send me off? For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The word in the Greek for perdition, the son of ruin or loss, the son of destruction, the son of damnable, a nation. That man could possibly be a nation. I thought about that when I looked at that definition, even albeit in the Greek, I'm like, interesting. The son of loss, of physical, spiritual, or eternal loss. The son of waste. It's got to be a falling away first. What are we falling away from? Everybody going to fall away from the church and they going to get away from Jesus? No. Paul never knew a Jesus. They filed for saying that he called him Jesus. <laughs> it wasn't even no J yet. There wasn't even no Christianity yet in the time of Paul. Paul ain't never known no Jesus. Who was the falling away? You Negroes who are here right now. You gonna have a falling away from the truth. Already done started. I done seen people fall away because the Bible a lie. God never or Yah never meant for us to eat meat. Abraham them was really sacrificing, having wheat offerings, all them offerings of, of, of cattle and sheep. That's a lie. The Old Testament is fake. I done seen it. Some of y'all might not seen it. It's already a falling away. Some of y'all might not seen it. Some of y'all might not seen it. Now I'm Messianics. I believe the Old Testament, but the New Testament was written by the white man. <laughs> that falling away already done started. We seeing people fall out of the truth for all type of reasons now. Ain't nobody going to fall out of the church. The church is exactly where it's supposed to be <laughs> in Jesus' name, waiting to be raptured up out of here. <laughs> they exactly where they're supposed to be. Ain't nobody falling away from that. Granted, they done lost a little money, but ain't nobody falling away. They ain't going to let them anyway. The Bible speaks about homosexuality. The church is like, nah, them scriptures, we ain't worried about that. All the music ministers is openly gay. <laughs> I remember when uh, in March, whatever they call Pride Month, I seen somebody on Twitter say happy Pride Month to all the music ministers. And it was an uproar up under this tweet. Man, how dare you say that about the church? Well, and I had to think about it just right here where I'm at. Like, it grows do know quite a few music ministers right here in little old Joliet that is openly gay and knowingly gay in the community. It's something to the music minister at these churches being gay. To each his own. That's the church business. I ain't a church Negro. That's their business. That's their business. You want to sit the scripture to the side for that? That's your business. No, the church is exactly where it's supposed to be. They need them homosexuals, though, because the homosexuals got all the money. They don't the want spending all the money in the church. So you can't tell them, man, wait, welcome. Because them people over the people need that money. They buy jets. They done came up. Pastors back in the day be balling just buy a Cadillac. No, they done came up. These pastors now need private checks. You Negroes better come clean out that bag. Period. You had the one dude talking about some, man, you don't get nothing to the poor. If you give it to the poor, you robbing y'all. God, he said. Give us something to the poor. Don't help nobody. Give it to the church. No, that ain't the falling away. The falling away is us. It's people going to be falling away from this truth, falling away. It's people you already have seen did that for different reasons. Uh, and not only falling away from being in the truth, not only that, from not wanting to hear it because of the camps and the different things we heard different people say. You got people now who don't even want to hear no truth. You get to talk about Yahushua and they like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I seen videos or I walk past such and such now. And they be on these corners yelling and shouting at folks. And you got some people now who, because of that, is like, I don't ever want to hear none of that. If that's what, what you involved in look like, then I'm straight. Oh, it's already falling away. And we make excuse for them Negroes like that's cool. 
quick to go stand on past the such and such, though, at Second Baptist, blue, blue, blue. <laughs> Don't want to say nothing about the big, well, at least they on the corner doing the work. That ain't work. We supposed to be representing and walking in the likeness and the image of Yahushua HaMashiach. It says, I think in John, I don't know the scripture at, you won't hear his voice yelling in the streets. It ain't exactly like that, but that's what it's saying. That ain't representing no Mashiach. I stand on what I stand on. I have yet to see these camps in large numbers in any one of our communities doing back to school drives, helping poor people get book bags for the kids. Coat drive for the winter. It ain't got to be no Christmas toy drive and no Thanksgiving turkey drive. Do a food drive. You know why I can say that? There's people on here who grew up around me know me. Me and my friends was doing food drive selling dope to provide the food and was taking it to the mission in the hood. I told my father this. They wrote an article about me here before in the paper. This organization, because I own the clothing store, this organization we had, it was a lot that entailed in it. <laughs> They wrote an article about me in the paper. These young men is trying to change the narrative and blah, blah, blah. And they did this big food drop because the mission told the local paper, Andre Parham and his friends coming through here dropping off food. They doing blah, blah, blah. And I ain't even no camp with no bunch of people around me. It was a, me, and a, me and a handful of my homies did that. Selling drugs to do it. We sold drugs to do it. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I guess we was giving back. You destroy your own people. At least we could go get some food out at the mission and the mission told the paper y'all got a way to make sure that don't win though because the mission tell the paper the paper write the article people was calling me wow we see you all in the paper man that's good what you doing all the time i'm thinking man nigga something don't do that i'm so foul <laughs> i knew i was foul they like we gonna write a follow up for you for Christmas because at the time we like we gonna do a toy drive too bring the, bring them to the mission in the hood that's all black my mama work at that mission still today I go down there and see her every once in a while it's all black folks now it's funny because back then it was like a bunch of older folks I go through it now and it's a bunch of people my age living there like damn boy it's crazy anyway when we do the toy drive I reach back out to the paper. Because now I'm stunting. I'm Frank Lucas in the city. I'm selling dope. I'm in the paper. I'm that dude. That's how I'm feeling in my mind. I reach back out to the paper for the toy drive. Like, yeah, we did the toy drive. Y'all gonna do the follow-up? The paper played me like, we can't do no more articles on you. I'm like, what you mean? We did the toy drive. They good. The lady, the, the, the reporter from the paper said, after we did that article, we got multiple calls here that you are a known drug dealer from Joliet. We ain't never write no article like that about you again. I get off the phone. I'm in the phone. I'm in the room with a room full of my homies. I tell them like, dang, they won't write the article. My homies is sad like, man, that's crazy, blah, blah, blah. I tell my homies like, what? We them dudes. What? We them dudes in the city. Even the paper is like, we can't. I thought that was such a badge of honor until I went to jail. I caught a dope case too right at that. Now that I think about it, the police probably was like, he done got way too cocky. We think I caught a dope case right after that too. They, they sent the undercover to buy some drugs for me. Point I'm trying to make is all these do good Hebrew camps ain't doing nothing. I was doing that selling dope. They taking tithes for money from people and ain't doing nothing for our people in these communities. And a lot of our people not in this see that and they like, I'm straight. I don't want nothing to do with none of that. That's part of the falling away. I took a long way to get back to that. That was a true story, Bob. but that's what I'm trying to say. Israel ain't representing this. You ain't, we ain't representing the Mashiach. He said, if you feed the little, the least of these, we don't feed nobody. And I'm talking about the big organizations because I'm sure all of you do what you do when you can. But you have big organizations that represent this awakening that I don't see in no hood feeding nobody. Even the Black Panthers was feeding our own people and getting them ready for school. This falling away already done started. People falling away from the truth. People falling away from wanting to hear the truth because of the way the truth is being represented. And you're going to see that first before the man of sin is to be revealed. The son of destruction. You're going to see that first, he said. Verse four. The son of destruction is going to pose and exalt himself above all that is of the most high. Yah. What is of the most high? Yah? The fruits of the spirit first. 
He's going to pose himself to joy, love, mercy, long suffering, kindness. He's going to pose that. He's going he gonna to pose humility and humbleness. We in a prideful time. Ain't no more humility and humbleness. Ain't no mercy. Oh, no, ain't no mercy. We in a generation now where it ain't even young. It's young and old. We in a generation now where you will get in a car accident. The person in the other car be dying. And you in there woozy. And you have people pulling up. Not to call the police and help. You have people pulling up, putting the phone in somebody's face. Watching them die. Don't even call the ambulance. He going to pose mercy. He going he gonna to pose caring about something. And don't get me started with the world because Negroes don't stick together. We want you to stick together. The village raised the kids and all that. That's over with. You better not say none of none of these young women kids. The daddy gone. She overprotecting the young man because the daddy ain't there. He reckless as ever. And you catch him out somewhere like, no, I don't do that. And he go call his mama and you have to check his mama because you stopped him from stealing and going to jail. And I had you in a position saying, you know what? Catch him out again, still, and I'm going to watch him go to jail. I'm going to pull my phone out and tape him. <laughs> or that is worship. No, he's going to exalt himself over all that is worship. Not even just Yah. He's going to exalt himself over all that is worship. So that he, as, as he wants to be Yah, he's going to sit in the temple of Yah, showing himself that he is a God. What is the temple of Yah today? Ain't no temple of Israel. What is the temple? Another delusion. Or oh, they're going to build a third temple, and that's where you're going to sit. No, they may build a third temple, but that ain't where he sit. The temple of Yah is the body. The holy of holies is the heart. Oh, the son of perdition is already on the hearts of the people in this world, including a lot of Israel, if not all of them. He already here. He already showing himself. Hamashiach himself said that that false Messiah spirit is already here. I don't know what that scripture is, but he, it might not even have been here. I think he said it, but I know Paul said it too, right? Man, that spirit is already here. If we believe in the timeline, that was 2,000 years ago. They said that spirit was already here. Part of the delusion, we'd have forgot that that spirit is already here. Yeah, the destruction of the light that causes a man to go into darkness. That delusion that we seen that Yah sent to Ahab, he done put it over the world. And don't be dismayed, Israel. Anybody who hear this, it's going to get tough. You cannot be dismayed because all of this is happening to lead us to where? Verse 5, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Shaul, like I just was with y'all, I was trying to put y'all on because it's real. We in the last days. Salvation is drawing near. The day of Yah is close, and now you know what withhold that he might be revealed in this time. I'm trying to tell you. You see, it was a falling away happening then. Shaul, like, there's people falling away. These Pharisees, his own folks, like, you better not be preaching in this day, and you got people falling away then. People actually was giving their lives for this now. We just act like it's just so much. It's Jacob's trouble. Oh, my goodness. They about to take section eight. <laughs> Man, do you know how many Israelites back then was in the name of Yahushua, boy, was getting stoned? I ain't seen an Israelite today in America get hit with a brick for saying that Jesus Christ was a black man. I just ain't seen it. I know when I look into the history of my people, there's a lot of Israelites who done lost their life in the name of Yahushua, though. Like, literally. <laughs> nah. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I need y'all to be on point, Shaul is saying. Why? Because the mystery of iniquity do of already work. Really, Shaul? What is that mystery? Oh, it's a mystery. The secret. The initiation. I thought that was interesting. He said the initiation of iniquity. Really? That's an initiation? Oh, yeah. The initiation of the violation of the law, the initiation, the secret of wickedness. It's a secret. The secret of unrighteousness. It do have already worked. And we call it good. It's okay if you a thief, if you get rich thief, and at least he did what he had to do. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay if, if you're sleeping with multiple women, especially if it, because what, what the women say now, at least tell me the truth. If you just want to sleep with me and you got multiple women, at least tell me the truth. Let me make the decision that I'm cool with that. It's okay. It's okay. Black culture. What is black culture? 
It's okay to sell dope to your own people and destroy them as long as you got money. We celebrate Big Meech coming home. Big Meech. So what you do? You destroy, you help destroy Detroit and Atlanta. <laughs> Welcome home from LeBron. Crime do pay. <laughs> Big Meech helped destroy Detroit and Atlanta. Atlanta used to be a cool, chill fake place until BMF and all of that in the 2000s. It ain't cool no more. I remember growing up, first time I went to Atlanta, I was 19. The OGs from my neighborhood was like, we going to Atlanta to kick it. They invite me. Everybody my age like, why they only invite two? I don't know, but I'm riding with them. I'm 19, they 29, 30. <laughs> I had a blast in Atlanta as a shorty. They went and got me a fake ID. I'm all in the club in Atlanta. We weren't worried about getting robbed or nothing. The family I got in Atlanta now, when you call down there, like, you got to keep your head on a swivel. These little Negroes is robbing folks. Atlanta feel like Chicago. They killing Negroes. Big Meech played a part in that. BML. They brought that element. Not saying that it wasn't there, but they brought, they blew that element up in Atlanta. He gets celebrated coming home. That the mystery of iniquity do have already worked. He gets celebrated. Only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. You got somebody else facilitating that mystery of iniquity right now. Somebody might say it was America. I wouldn't be mad at him. America does facilitate, facilitate a lot of the iniquity in this world. It do. It do. But that's got to be taken out of the way to make room for the son of perdition. See, it's something new coming. Remember, we talk about delusion. How is that new going to get here? Because everybody going to be under the delusion. <laughs> and this is why we can't be dismayed at all this delusion. It's a lot of delusion. Mexicans was voting for Trump because Venezuelans is taking their job and now Trump them is like first day we deporting a bunch of you Mexicans. Now they like, oh man, what was we thinking? Pope, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say something crazy. Whole white folks was like, get away from Obamacare. And they're like, you know they trying to cut the ACA and they like, hey, I need the ACA. That's all. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Muslims, we can't stand the way Biden them is handled. Israel and what they doing to Muslims all through the Middle East. We can't stand it. The delusion. This whole election was about the delusion. Both sides. It was the delusion. We can't stand what they over there doing with the Muslims. Donald Trump them saying first day we giving Benjamin Netanyahu them a blank check. You could kill any Muslim in the Middle East you want. Biden, you need to do something before you go. Biden like, man, I got 30 days. That's over with, cuz. <laughs> That's over with. You got the man up now. Everybody got a man up, Israel. Don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed because it'll lead you to the delusion. Some of us been under the delusion until they seen what happened in this election. Now we coming out of the delusion. You don't know it yet, but say hallelujah. These people. These nations, whoever you want to put the face of who, who facilitate this wickedness in the world today. That teach this world it's okay to sin. Even they going to be moved out the way so the son of perdition can come. And then shall that wicked be revealed. What wicked, y'all? Oh, it's a wicked. This gets worse. Oh, this gets worse, y'all see. Uh-uh. That wicked going to be revealed. This, this goes to another level. We see it coming. This world is as wicked as it's ever been right now. Definitely in my lifetime. And I talked to my granny at 92. She say in her lifetime. This world is crazier than it's ever been. Whom the most high y'all shall consume. I take it back. Whom the Messiah is going to consume this wicked with the spirit of his mouth, with the truth of the word, with the light. Not speaking delusional. <laughs> and she'll destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
heavenly glory. The truth of the word is the only way. That's why we got to be patient with our people. We coming into a time where the only way our people is going to be okay is they're going to have to have the truth of the word. And we, you all are the ones who have been called to know the truth about the word. It does not matter where your level is at with the word. You need to get better. We all probably could get better. And everybody in here, at least the people I know personally, everybody's on a different level with what they understand about the word, what they've applied to their life, what they struggle with, all that. At the end of the day, ain't none of that going to matter. You are the last line of defense with the truth of this word. And we in the time of delusion. And that delusion is important. That delusion is important, Annie, y'all, because with y'all, the reason why you waking up sad and y'all got that on your heart, because you know we close to him who is coming after the work in us, Satan, with all power and signs and lying, delusional wonders. <laughs> oh, yeah, we close to him. A worldly power. He, he, got all, he got all of the worldly power and the signs of lies. He got all that. And with all deceivableness and with the delusion of unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is okay. It's celebrated today. That's why ain't nobody paying no attention. Unrighteousness is celebrated today. It's celebrated on your TV. It does not matter. With sports, unrighteousness is celebrated in all things. In the music, Social media, social media is the biggest catalyst to celebrate our righteousness. Social media is so reckless. I've been, I've been thinking about deleting all my social media and I really don't even have much. I don't have much of a presence, but I've been thinking about deleting it. That's something I got to pray about because it's just been on my mind. Like, you know what? This is, social media is just really kind of getting out of hand. The one who coming with all of the delusion of unrighteousness in them that perish. That delusion is going to cause folks to perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. As my wife broke down, the word for delusion means the destruction of the light causing darkness in man. And if you don't receive the love of the truth, the love of the light, you're going to perish in the delusion. And for this cause, Yahuwah shall sin, it ain't no secret. It ain't no mistake. Just like that angel. Y'all was in heaven and said, I'm tired of this world. Who can go and make this world do what I needed to do? And it was an angel the whole time who stepped up and said, I go put this strong delusion on the whole world, y'all. <laughs> and y'all said, yeah, you know what? Go do that. He gonna send a strong delusion. Folks delusional about this election. Delusional about America, delusional about freedom, delusional about oppression, delusional about a European Messiah named Jesus Christ. Who is he? Delusional about this terrible businessman who is going to be this great businessman for America. Dude, about to file bankruptcy on America. When he do, it's going to be real. <laughs> and so he... Dude, been sued by, got sued by black folks in the 70s. Him and his daddy don't want black folks renting their apartments. <laughs> oh, man. We delusional about reparations here. We delusional about black culture. We delusional in this truth and the way that we carry this word. We think that we represent Yahushua, shouting our people down and talking crazy, looking down on our people. We think we delusional in thinking because y'all didn't gave us some understanding on Torah. A lot of us come off, myself included at a time, has come off as a know-it-all. People don't even want to talk to you. People don't even want to be around you. You think about when you read those gospels, as they say about the life of Amashiach, then nobody say, I don't want to be around him. Everybody wanted to be around him. See, that's another lie. That's another part of the delusion. You get the sense through church and other things like he was just around and people weren't feeling him. When you actually read this, you find out it was many people who felt him, was following him everywhere. He was like, y'all go home. I got to go all the way up at the top of the mountain just to pray. Y'all in here making too much noise. I can't even focus. He wasn't saying that, but that's how he was acting when he was stepping off. Oh, it's a lot of delusion, and that delusion, that delusion was sent through y'all because salvation is drawing now, and before it come, that wickedness got to be fulfilled. 
Y'all don't lose hope for your people, man. This ain't the time to be falling out with nobody over if they saying God or Yah. And this ain't the time. Your fallout may cause somebody to perish because you the last line of defense. You don't even know it. This ain't the time. This ain't the time to fall out with nobody because they eat pork. This ain't the time to fall out with nobody because they smoke weed. This ain't the time to fall out with nobody because they sell dope. I'm falling out with you if you're a murderer, though. If you just out here killing folks, I just can't deal with you. <laughs> I do have a lie. But <laughs> we got to get past some of that. This ain't the time to be falling out with nobody just because they church folks. Because you the last line of the descent. The the last line of defense and the strong delusion is here that they should believe a lie. What's the lie? Many of them. What's the biggest lie? That Jesus Christ is coming to rapture you up out of here. That's a lie. No, no, ain't no European coming to get you. And people all over the world believe that lie. That Mohammed is coming back to say the Muslims. Nah, where he at? The Muslims I talk to don't even like to talk to me because I'm they be telling me about the Middle East and I'm like, where Mohammed at? <laughs> Father, forgive me. I probably shouldn't be saying that like that, but I have. Nah, that they should believe a lie. Mm -mm. It's a strong delusion on our people thinking by shouting our people down on the corners, we bringing them truth. That's a lie. Don't be dismayed at this delusion, man. Stand strong. We the last line of defense that need to speak this light, the truth, because here come. Here he come. He close. Y'all know he close. He close. I was talking to my mama recently about this. Mama, you closer than you know. He close. That they all might be damned. Judged. Sentenced who believe not the truth. And if that scripture is true and we believe them all to be true, then we need to do a lot better job at trying to assist our people to believe and see the truth. They all might be judged to believe not the truth, but have pleasure. People have pleasure in unrighteousness in this world today. It's the funnest thing ever. The clubs is jumping. The lichiviousness is at an all-time high. It'll make sense, so don't be dismayed. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments, anything anybody want to add to any of this before we go? I'm running a little over, but we on time. Anything anybody got before we get up out of here? Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Keep your swords sharp, but stay humble. Don't be out here tweaking. This ain't the time for that. Hebrew and Shebrew. Do not be out here tweaking. This is not the time. You be done lost somebody playing around right now. It's crazy. Y'all has anointed you to be the light. Be the light. Don't be playing out here. Be the light. The darkness can't comprehend it. The delusion can't comprehend you, but you will mess yourself up doing too much. Stop being all over the place when you talk to your people. Stick to one point. If you could get one person to repent about one thing, you did a job. It took some of us seven, eight, nine, ten years to be who we is in the truth. We go talk to our husbands, our wives, our kids, our grannies, our mamas, and we mad because they ain't get everything it took us 10 years to get in 30 days. <laughs> we done cut our mama off. She won't stop eating pork. It took us four years to stop eating pork. We got to be cool, man. We got to be cool, man. Shabbat shalom, my now. Good to see you. Hallelujah. We got to be cool, man. It's definitely a spiritual warfare, a spiritual warfare. Anything anybody got before we go? Shabbat Shalom. I didn't even know my Ak Johnson was here. Shabbat Shalom. Looked like he left. Oh, it's a pleasure. Huh? I have a question. Lower is yours. Okay. Um, so if we do talk um, to someone about pork. Hmm? What's the scripture in Revelation that speak about uh, uh, 
about pork because you know it could be uh, detrimental to their salvation. It is. It could be. We just Like, ain't falling out with nobody behind it. But you're right. well, I'm not talking about falling out, but I'm talking about you know, because some people need to understand that they have to eat right, you know. You, you are correct. It's at the end here somewhere. Where he talks about it. Um, I ain't going to lie. Somebody going to have to Google it or something and find it. I know, Cause I, I know what I you're know, talking cause, about. cause I know some um, people who, um, even that's you know studying the scriptures and everything, they don't think there's nothing wrong with it. You know, they're eating it still. And it's like um, that might keep you out, but you know, I didn't go into. A, Hey yo, that's funny. Negroes ain't giving up no swine. <laughs> oh, we just gotta stay on the point of it. A cult he is just speak it with some compassion when you speak it to your folks. Speak it with some humility. Speak it with some humbleness. It don't take a lot. All it takes is a word. Look at Revelation 2 and 20. It may be. I know you talk about who won't make it into the city at the end here somewhere, but I'm kind of fried now. My mind ain't working. Revelation 2 and 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that, women, that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophet, as to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. That could be it, but it's somewhere else I believe it. Speak about it. You are correct. What about the eighth verse? What's the eighth verse say? Come on now. We ain't, hey, yo. We okay, that's that. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I I'll look it One up. Day for that. Come on, man. And okay. I'm okay. Doing okay. The okay. okay. Uh uh. Go ahead. Go do what you got to do. <laughs> right, these You're so compassionate. You're so compassionate. Go on, go on, do what you got oh, to do. Oh, man. See, I got to get myself together. Thank you for putting me, for getting me right. Let me get this together. Revelation 2 and 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, right, these things say a first and the last which was dead and is alive. Where we going? Where you going? Come on back. Where you going? Nobody rushing you, man. Look at you. Come on back now. I said I can't find it. It's at the end somewhere. I know it because it talks about like in 20, 21, 22, one of them, maybe 19. It talks about what type of person that won't make it into the kingdom. And I think it has a, 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 a I think it does say something about swine there. See if you can find it and let me know. Any, yeah, I see your hand. Um, what I was going to say was, do you think that uh, when we're doing that, we should definitely prioritize um exactly what it is that we we're gonna you know approach like let's say somebody's eating pork but yet they out here in rapid sin like <laughs> i think like you know being able to prioritize like okay yeah what should i approach first like and like an example i was in class and this young brother he did his little presentation and after class he asked me some questions and i was able to give him the word of the most high you know and tell him to encourage and in and be in faith and and understand that or I could have been like you know you should be just you know you know what I'm saying so I get what you're saying but like as far as like prioritizing what it is that that we are going to address like with my mom she knows a lot she's very like you know she's wise but she just won't leave the shrimp alone <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I gotta prioritize like mom you you are heavy in them churches like Let's let's hop in this word together. Like I'm not gonna be so heavy on like stop eating that shrimp, stop eating that shrimp. Hey, let's let's hop in this word real quick. You know, so I don't know. I was just getting advice on that, like to figure out if we should be prioritizing like That's certain good. things over like food and stuff. That's good. That's actually a good idea. And not only that, listen to people. Like meet a person where they at. You know, um, Every issue ain't, ain't you like I said, we can't you it ain't about like like we'll have a conversation amongst us, right? And within an hour, we may go over 20 topics. Stick to one. Know your audience, know who you're talking to. Listen to people when they're talking and just stick to one. It may not be pork, it may be the holidays, it may be uh uh um um it may be talking about the fruits of the spirit, about the way we treat people, like. 
it's a lot of ways to speak a truth. It, when it comes to speaking to somebody, really anybody, even somebody in the truth, it ain't about it ain't about all things with everybody. Stick to one thing. Start there. We on something with this, this, and that. And then, you know, always letting y'all guide us. But the point I'm saying is, is, is the strong delusion is here. And in my opinion, the son of perdition is knocking at the door. If he not here, like I say, scriptures say that spirit been in the world. This is not the time to be falling out with nobody about no petty issues. And when I say petty, I'm not saying it don't matter, but okay. You the last line of defense. Lose somebody you love to the lake of fire because you can't get past them eating shrimp. And if you just spoke about the culture of our people and used slavery to show us in the Bible, might have brought them off the shrimps. That's what I'm saying. It's at the time to lose nobody for nothing like that. A co TKC, Agda Hobby. <laughs> Shalom. Oh. Yeah, it just brought it brought to mind when I was back home. Um and my son, you know, he's brand new. He's a brand new baby in the walk. Praise Yah. Oh, yeah. he, we were talking about uh, Rahab and how she hung the, I had mentioned her hanging the cord from the balcony so that her, she and her family would be saved. And so he said, well, I don't, I don't remember that. Mom, I don't remember that story in the Bible. And then he went to say, well, I didn't go to church that much. But I went with grandma, but I don't remember it. I don't remember any of the stories. And I said, you know what? It's not important to remember it, but to study it from the beginning. Try to start from the beginning because he actually started in Revelation. But I wanted him to get a foundation first so that, you know, through the prophets, he could perhaps uh, understand Revelation better. But the, the beauty of Yah is that my son brought up a video that, uh, of someone that he relates to on TikTok. I don't, I had never heard of this person. And in the study, the young man was talking about um, Yahuwah and Yeshua and how Yah's, uh, Yah's name is in the son's name. The son's name has the father's name within it. So I was patient. I, re I know these things, right? But just to your to what you were saying earlier, you have to meet people where they are and you have to be patient with them and be long suffering. Even though I knew all that, I was patient. I was listening to what he was trying to show me, even though I already knew it. The young, the guy that was teaching brought up the story of the, is it Joshua when he went through the city and the uh, Rahab had hung the cord. Yeah. That yeah. young man on the video brought up that very story, and it was just like y'all was saying, "Okay, here you are, son. This is what your mom was trying to tell you." And so he remembered, he said, oh, I remember it now. So like you said, you never know the moment that you're able to give a uh, plant a seed in someone. And it's just, a, I'm, I give y'all all the glory because my son had been, um, he had been not wanting to hear the truth for a long time, but I would just plant little seeds here and there, not pushing just a little bit here and there. And to Yah, to Yah be the glory. Now he's actually teaching his wife <laughs> oh. and his and my grandchildren. He's planting those seeds in them. So praise Yah for all of it. Hallelujah. And you know, <laughs> Ab, after she did that, if I'm not mistaken, they had made, you know, when she when she put the string out the window or whatever, when we took the city, they kept her and everybody in her house alive. Yes. Yes. And she can't even exist amongst the awakening today because can't no heathen do nothing good for no Israelites. And we definitely ain't keeping none alive if y'all give us the power to go kill everybody. See how weird this is now? Right. She I'm couldn't saying. even exist. Rahab, uh, Rahab, was Rahab a white woman? Oh my goodness. It don't matter. She got string out anyway. Niggas that killed her with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> string it all. It's an Israelite who killed her today. Yeah, y'all can use whom he pleases. And what he pleases. He said he'll have the rocks cry out for him. <laughs> part cry of out for him. You don't need us. Oh, <laughs> facts. That's part of it. It's so crazy. Yeah. That's part of the delusion within this awakening, thinking we know who y'all going to spare. Even Moses knew better than that. Moses said, I don't know. Y'all told him. Don't nobody know. And Moses never acted like he knew again. But that's a, that's a good point. We're going to pray for your son as well. Just stick to the point. Thank you. 
Don't fall out with nobody today. Even if they talking reckless, this Dutch and Free Dog keep it moving. Shaul didn't fall out. Mashiach didn't fall out. The disciples wasn't falling out with nobody. We just got to keep it moving. But you the last line of defense. Understand the power that you've been given. Understand the job. And it don't matter who you are. On this call, who hear me? Different people. It's some Israelites on here who was batting a thousand. There's some Israelites on here only batting a hundred. You all got the same job. And don't forget it. Anything else anybody got before we go? I got a quiz I need to finish before the end of the night. <laughs> Mama school, Mama Speed, I'm working school. It ain't working me. I tell you that. That's the key. Hallelujah. As we get ready to humble our hearts and our mind to pray out. Shabbat shalom to everybody who made it. Shabbat shalom, Yahusha. I see you made it. Good to see you. I hope you got some rest today. I know you're working hard. Shabbat shalom, Sammy. I know you're working hard, too. I hope you got some rest today. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, Shabbat shalom, I Shabbat shalom. Good to hear both of y'all voice. I hope y'all getting some rest. Shabbat shalom, Tiff. I know you always working hard. I hope you getting some rest. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Mitch. You always working hard. I really hope you getting some rest. Same with my mama. She be working too hard. Y'all two of the oldest people I know, yet y'all all working everybody. Y'all got to chill out. <laughs> Y'all got to chill out. Y'all worrying y'all kids, man. Y'all working too hard, man. Take a break, man. Everybody good, man. Take a break. It's all good. <laughs> oh, man. So we humble our hearts and our minds and we just bow our heads and look up to the sky or put your hands up or, or get out on your knees, whether you face east, which Mama Speed was right earlier. We just facing back towards the land. If you're in the north, you're facing south. If you're in the west, you're facing east. If you're in the east, you're facing west. If you're far east, I guess I should say. And if you're in the south, you're facing north. Abba Yaz, we come to you today as we get ready to get up out of here. We just thank you, Father Yah, for fellowship, for all that you've done, for blessing us to understand the Shabbat. Father, I pray that you put the words in all of our mouths. You give us all a heart of discernment and the wherewithal to understand, who, un knowing that whomever we stand in front of with the words, you put us there. And we just ask that you could to continue to reveal to us exactly what needs to be spoken to each person, knowing that each conversation is different, but they all point to you. Father, I pray that you cause us to decrease so that we don't get too caught up in ourselves, knowing that the scripture said that if a man think he knows something, he don't know nothing. And we respect that, I'll be out, knowing that it's always more to know. That should keep us humble and showing humility and knowing that we got growth, that we also need to grow, but that we can speak a word of truth. We can speak a word of positivity. We can speak a word of the kingdom and the covenant that you have given to your people. To whomever you put in front of us, Father. We humbly come before your throne. I'll be out today to ask that you continue to, to bless Agda Havis and, and Akoti KC's home. Strengthen them in Torah, strengthen their bond together in you. Father Yah, we pray that you that you that you open up her son's heart and plant your throne as, as the authority in his life. That you give him the wherewithal, Father Yah, to understand and to see the evils that's around, to give him a praying heart and a praying mind, and to know to come to your throne when he goes through anything, to know to lean on to Torah Abiyah. And I pray that you strengthen him in the word, that you strengthen him in the covenant. And that even if all he has is the faith of a mustard seed, that you water it so it can grow into being a tree. Father, I pray for everybody on the call, be it Mitch, be it Mama Speed, be it Obadiah, be it a Cote, Kathy Smith, be it Tiff, be it Sammy, be it my Akihusha once again, Ak Daniel, Big Mike and Ebony, Angel, and Yah. We just pray, Abba Yah, that you be a blessing on all of their households and you be all that they need. I pray for my Koti Mana that you bless her mother and her brothers as they are in Ethiopia, Abiyah, getting closer to the land, that you sustain them in all things, Abiyah, for you are a father to the fatherless and a help to the needy. And that if your Ruach HaKodesh is over them, that they will be okay. 
and we trust that it is because your word won't go out void and they are some righteous Israelites trying to do bite by you, Abiyah. I pray that you have mercy on them and forgive them of any transgressions. I pray that you forgive my nah, her brother Jojo, her sister Amber, that you are a blessing to their household, that you reveal yourself and you turn your face back onto them, that you give them the discernment to see anywhere where they may err if they do, and the wherewithal to correct themselves in this last days, in this time of delusion, I'll be, I'll let your light of your truth be upon us all and help us to be better vessels, knowing that we are the last line of defense, the fishermen of men, the shepherds to feed. And we just pray, Abiyah, that you give us all the proper bread to be a blessing unto whomever you choose. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Abiyah, let your word be true. As we know, it won't go out void. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in the Shemaim. And we pray that you bind up all powers and principalities as they understand that as your word grows with us, they are trying to up the ante. But there is no ante high enough that you can't cover. In the name of Yahushua, we pray all things. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 This is Miss E. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Miss E. Hey. Shalom. <laughs> All right. You Call me quite later, a few Mr. Oh. Andre. I need to talk with you. We'll do. Okay, right. baby. We'll do. Love everybody. Shabbat shalom. Love you, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Everybody have a blessed day. Peace and blessings, y'all. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Peace and health.